Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the billionaire who created Minecraft and recently sold his company to Microsoft. Now, he recently released a series of tweets talking about how he feels so empty inside despite having all this money and partying with celebrities in expensive islands. So I want to read with you some tweets. Uh, but just to give you a bit of background as to why I'm making this video, first, uh, it's to encourage you to read the book, The How of Happiness. Now, this is a book that goes into extensive science and it gives a comprehensive guide to what actually makes a human happy in the long term, which I think is very, very important. And... Uh, a lot of people miss the mark or you know they just form their own ideas on it or theories and they pursue that and if it doesn't work out they don't know what to do they just you know they let depression take over them or, or sadness or whatever else and so that's that's basically why I am getting into this and uh, you know this man he's definitely been kicking up some storm lately uh, definitely a bit of publicity he has a very public Twitter and he's been fairly public in a sense uh, being the creator behind Minecraft he's known as Notch and Minecraft is you know huge if you guys don't know it is it was the most one of the most searched if not the most searched term on YouTube of the last year and we're talking you know billions of people go on to YouTube every month and Minecraft was one of the most searched terms you can imagine how many people watch Minecraft videos uh, and so hundreds of millions of uh, you know Minecraft mods and games have been made and YouTube videos with millions upon millions of views and so this man has been kicking up a storm lately recently I was reading um, the magazine Forbes which is a well-known uh, business magazine and he was featured in it and they talked about how he spent around two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars in one night at a nightclub now this is a, get, a guy who you know he spent his life programming and he was the stereotypical nerd in, in a sense kinda uh, and so he spent most of his life up until his 30s programming and according to his interview in Forbes, he said that he was doing it to make up for lost time. Um, I find that fascinating because, you know, some people, they do what they do because they really enjoy it. And that's what they would do no matter what. And, uh, you know, you have people like Bill Gates like that. They program because they wanted to program. And perhaps Notch was like that too, but I guess... Um, even him, you know, he felt like he was missing out on certain things uh, in his youth. Uh, be and, you know, he couldn't do anything about it. So I think that's a lesson for, for everyone, for me included. So anyhow, um, I'm, I'm going to read out some of the tweets. And uh, most likely I'll take a screenshot of these tweets uh, just as a record. Because although, you know, they're available now. Uh, people tend to delete their tweets in the future uh, and I think this is a huge problem you know impulsive tweets can be an issue it's kind of like drunk texting or drunk tweeting so essentially you know he got really tired of working on Minecraft because apparently you know once it got to such a huge scale uh, he had millions upon millions of people you know, telling him to do this, to do that. And when you hit such a scale of people, and I can only imagine, because I, I mean, I've, I've observed it from just YouTube comments, you know, you get all sorts of craziness. And if you let that consume you, uh, that could be a problem. You get tons of hate. No matter what you do, someone's complaining, someone's arguing with you, someone hates you, someone says you're doing this wrong, that wrong. And it could be a huge issue. And apparently, you know, maybe this was part of the reason 
uh, I think he mentioned that this was part of the reason that he decided to one day just send out a tweet and say, I'm looking to sell this, uh, please contact me. And he ended up selling it to Microsoft. And he sold it for a few billion dollars. I don't know if it was a good you know, decision on Microsoft to buy this thing uh, for the fact that, I mean, it was, uh, they made they made a calculated decision uh, hoping that Minecraft would be a long-term thing and not just a fad. Um, so far, they've been proved right. Anyhow, the point is, let me just read you some of his tweets. He, he's a court, apparently going a bit crazy with the tremendous amounts of billions of dollars he has. And he's been buying ridiculous stuff like... Um, you know, incredible homes and apartments and penthouses with hidden secret passages in the doors and all sorts of crazy stuff just because he can. And so let me just read you a few of his tweets. The problem with getting everything is you run out of reasons to keep trying and human interaction becomes impossible due to imbalance. Now, uh, I can kind of see this from his perspective or an average person's perspective. You know, he's just like not really sure what's going on. Uh, he finds that this is a problem and he doesn't know what to do. And he's realized, you know, maybe getting everything isn't what you wanted, even though it seems like everyone wants to get everything. And I guess what he means by everything is have all this money to buy everything. And so now I'm going to talk about it through the lens of having read books like The How of Happiness, as well as a couple others that are relevant. Um, one important aspect to happiness is a level of um, progress and a level of moving towards goals and achieving them. And this ties into why a lot of wealthy individuals, uh, many of which who have made billions of dollars from scratch, uh, having spent 20 years or 30 or 40 years uh, building a business, they tend to go back to work even though that even though they they could retire or live off the money they've made. And oftentimes many of these people do. They retire for one or two years and they just they they don't find it fun. They get bored and they go back to work. And I I would like to talk about this because, so many people don't emphasize this. So many people don't talk about it. And then you get people who, you know, they don't realize this and they chase things and, and they chase the wrong things or they chase things too much. Let me read you a second tweet by uh, Notch. Hanging out in Ibiza with a bunch of friends and partying with famous people. Able to do whatever I want and I've never felt more isolated. So he... You know, he feels a lot of loneliness despite being surrounded by all these people. And not just people, but very famous, socially reputable people. So, again, this goes to... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of things here. He's in this very exclusive island, uh, you know, partying with very high wealth individuals being able to afford to do whatever he wants, and yet he feels so alone. I'm guessing, you know, first off, there's this thing uh, called, and, and again, there's a lot of books that talk about this. There's a lot of science behind this. It's called um, hedonic adaptation, and it works for a lot of things. Wealth, uh, the type of food you eat, uh, it works a bit for women too. And basically, this concept, what it means is that as humans, we tend to uh, ratchet up and really quickly take things for granted. And um, in order to achieve long-term happiness, there are other things outside of these things that you should do, like uh, uh, express gratitude and uh, find goal-setting activities. And the book, The How of Happiness, uh, it details about a dozen that are helpful in achieving long-term happiness. However, there's many things that um, 
for the most part, unless you think about things differently and you start uh, exercising and taking certain uh, behaviors and exercises mentioned in the book um, into account, you will just naturally ratchet up and take these things for granted. And you know, most of the time, it can't be helped because these things are not inherently something that will bring long-term happiness. Unfortunately, society and big business and capitalism in a lot of ways, uh, they have sort of perpetuated this myth or dream that you need to spend more money or you need to have certain things like you know, hang around with high status people and show that off or go to expensive islands in order to be happy. So I'm guessing, and this is just, it could be completely wrong. Um, I don't want to sound arrogant. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, perhaps, you know, he doesn't relate to these people and he would, you know, he would make friends a lot better with people who understand him a lot better, who may not be rich, may not be famous, may not be high status, but understand his interests and his passions better. And so, you know, some people inherently understand this, others do not. And I think that's why I'm making this video because people don't understand it, you know. Um, even myself partially, you know, you always wonder what would it would be like to hang out with the popular kids or the rich kids or whatever else. Sometimes it could work, other times you got nothing in common with these people anyways. Why are you hanging around with them? The next tweet, in Sweden, I will sit around and wait for my friends with jobs and families to have time to do shit. Watching my reflection in the monitor. I've heard this a lot from entrepreneurs who have like finally made it. And like this is like their dream and they think like this is what they can do. And then they realize, oh shoot, the rest of the world, they have jobs. And they're not on like some ridiculous level where you're making tremendous money and you have tremendous amounts of free time and it's you know a dream that's a lot of us uh, entrepreneurs and you know hard-working individuals we envision and we dream and we bust our butts trying to achieve then we when we get there we realize everyone else is at work or they're doing something and they don't they don't have time to spend time with you or anything so um, it's interesting this guy's from Sweden that's just an interesting thing but anyhow uh, I find that interesting as well, and I find it interesting that this billionaire, you know, having all this money and freedom has nothing better to do than watch his reflection in the monitor. I, kn I know he's probably saying that maybe tongue-in-cheek, um, but you can tell he still likes computers, he still likes, you know, going on the internet, having billions of dollars, you know, sometimes it doesn't require billions of dollars to do what you truly want to do in life, and even if you have that money, what you truly want to do may only cost uh, the price of an internet access and a decent computer. So it, I don't know what to say um, other than what I've already said. Next tweet. When we sold the company, the biggest effort went into making sure the employees got taken care of. And they all hate me now. Um, I feel like this guy's definitely coming from the voice of, uh, you know, a guy who was really into programming, not not really the best people person or best manager or CEO or anything like that. Um, I do think there's there's a lot of books I I would recommend him if he was interested. Um, and in these books, uh, there are very reputable, high achieving people who have, you know really developed a lot of great people skills and helped a lot of people over the years and been just amazing managers. And these people, I think, um, they could have taught him how to maybe, you know, really help, really do this in a way where um, it could have been a win-win situation and it wouldn't have